high-speed wire communication is commonplace today. Lift the telephone receiver and the... Hello guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Nalo, and today we're going to be doing a basics of trading video, as you can see by the comment on the screen. So AB left this comment on one of my most recent videos, and I just wanted to mention real quick that if you wanted to see one of your ideas made into a real video, just leave me a comment below, and I'll ask you some questions about it, and then I'll make the video if the idea is very good. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and let's get straight into this current video. So you want to be a master of trading. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that trading on a fundamental level is basically just trying to get items or money without putting in as many items or money. Basically, you want to end up on top. And that's sort of the fundamental thing that you have to remember when you're doing any sort of trading at all. So when you're considering a sort of trade up that you want to do or you're considering a trade that you want to do on Steam, you have to just think, Will I be on top after I do this trade? Will I make money when I do this trade? And there's a various amount of ways that you can figure this out, and I'll get into those ways right now. So the first way to figure out how much items are worth is by using the Global Offensive Trade subreddit. Basically, the way to access this is by going on Google and typing in Go Trade, and you'll be able to find the CSGO Trading subreddit. You can use Price Checking Post to find out how much an item is worth, and you can figure out if you're getting a good deal or not. So I highly recommend using this one first before anything else. The other way that you can actually figure out how much your item is worth is by going to uh, CSGO Traders. It's a group on Steam. This is kind of a worse way to do things because there isn't as many members and not as much activity, but it's definitely something you can use as a mode. So now that we know how much our items are worth, the next thing to do is to figure out if you're getting a good deal or not. Now there's a few factors you have to take into account when you're trying to find out if you got a good deal or not, and uh, one of the most important ones is demand. So what demand factors into is basically how fast you're going to be able to trade your items, how quickly you're going to be able to trade them, and for how much you're going to be able to trade them for. So, for example, the P250 wideout has probably pretty low demand, and the AK47 redline has pretty high demand. So basically why demand is important here is because the AK47 redline is going to get a lot more trade offers than the P250 wideout, because more people want the redline than they do the wideout in general. So the best way to figure out how much demand an item has is to go to its Steam Market page and find out how much volume of it is being traded. You can see the volume uh, basically by how many people are selling and buying the item. If there's a lot of people selling the item but not a lot of people buying it, then it probably has low demand. And if there's a lot of people buying it but not so many people selling it, then it's probably a rare item that has high demand. So yeah, you have to take into uh, account demand for sure when you're figuring out if a trade is good or not. So for example, if we take a look at the AK-47 Elite build here, we can see that it has over 20,000 buy order requests, and a lot of them are currently on sale at the market. Also, if you look at the graph, it's very close together, which means a lot of them are being traded and sold every single day. So this item obviously has really, really high demand. Now, the next thing to take into account, and probably less important than demand, is the price of the item you're trading for. Obviously, you want to make profit, and most traders will know that you're trying to make profit, so what you want to do to make the most amount of profit is find somebody who really wants the skin that you have. So let's say, for example, you have a Karambit Tiger Tooth, and there's a person that's trading you who really, really wants the Karambit Tiger Tooth. If they really, really want the skin and they want to use it to play with, that's good. That means they're going to be offering you more keys or more money for your Kramit Tiger Tooth than someone who just wants it for trading purposes. So try to find someone who really, really wants the item, uh, that really wants to get the item to use for play skins particularly. And uh, if you find someone like that, then they will definitely overpay for your items so that they get it quicker. And that will give you more profit. So try to make sure you're patient and find someone who's willing to pay more of a price for your item. Uh, before you just go willy-nilly and try to sell your item really quickly. So the next thing is quick selling or QSing. Basically what QSing is, is it's when you sell your item for the current buy order price at the lowest buy order price. So basically what a QSing is, is it's selling your item for lower than it's actually worth so that you get the money faster. Now you want to avoid QSing as much as possible. It's uh, really hard to avoid it when you're doing trade-up contracts because a lot of the time you're going to get a trade-up uh, that you don't want, an undesirable trade-up, and you want to quick sell it so that you can just get your money and buy more inputs. You don't want to do this because you're not going to get as much money back for your items as you could, and therefore you're going to lose a lot of money. Take the op Atheris, for example, in Satrack Field Tested Condition, the lowest buy order price is around $18 to $19 currently, but the current market price is around $21 to $23 currently. 
So if you were to sell it for $21 to $23, you're going to end up with an extra dollar or two uh, rather than if you were to just quick sell it right away. Basically, just make sure that you're selling your item at a profitable margin and make sure you're not falling victim to quick selling so that you're losing money. If you sell your items at more profitable margins all the time and you keep your items at a place where they're going to make you more money, you're going to have a lot more money to work with overall and it's going to benefit you a lot more in the future even if it takes longer. So just keep that in mind. The next thing we're going to talk about is float values. Float values are super, super important when you're trying to make profit on trade-ups because if you don't have a certain float value for your items, a lot of the times it can go from a profitable trade-up to a very not profitable trade-up. Take what's on screen right now as my Op Asimov trade-up. I had a bunch of field-tested P90 Trigons, and so I went to trade-up for a field-tested Op Asimov. I got the Op Asimov, but it ended up that the Op Asimov was actually well-worn. I was really happy to get the Op Asimov, and I still profited, but I would have actually profited another $10 if I would have got a field-tested Op Asimov, and if I would have paid attention to the float values of the input skins. So make sure you're paying attention to the float values of the skins that you're using to trade up, or you're not going to be able to actually get the item that you want. Now, I'm going to go into more specifics here in a second, but float values are super, super important, so just keep that in mind as a general tip. And now I'm going to tell you guys how to figure out if you have the right float values and what float value you're actually going to get for the overall skin later. So by far the best way to find out what float value the skin that you're going to get from a trade-up is going to be is by using the site CSGO Exchange and using the trade-up contract tool on the site. Basically what this trade-up tool allows you to do is it allows you to pick skins and input their float values and basically add what skins you're using for the inputs for the trade-up and then it will tell you the exact outputs of the trade-up all the way down to the exact float value of the outcomes. So this is the best way to make sure you're avoiding getting the wrong floats. Keep in mind that CSGO Exchange does take a little bit of practice to get used to, and it also takes a little bit of time to put in the exact floats of each skin that you're using, but also keep in mind that it can be very, very much so worth it. Basically treat it as if you were doing like a part-time job, for example. So if I wanted an Op Asimov, and I wanted to trade it for a field tested one, and I was putting in $3 inputs, I would end up with putting in about $30 for the Op Asimov, and if I were to get a well-worn one, I'd get about $40 out of it. I'd still profit about $7, but if I were to get the field tested one and use CSGO Exchange to make sure I was using the right float skins, then I would end up having a $50 Op Asimov. So I'd make an extra $10, and that would be obviously really, really good. If someone were to tell you that you can make an extra $10 at your job anytime you want, then you're obviously going to take it. So make sure that you understand that even though it takes time, it is definitely worth it in the end. So now we're going to talk about what trade-ups to do and how to figure out what trade-ups you want to do. Basically, the best way to do this is to go to tradeuphero.com and you can actually use their tool to find out what the most profitable trade-ups are and what the percentages are across the board, how much your profit margin is going to be, the risk chances, uh, and the float values for all the skins. All this important information that you have to know when you're trying to figure out what the best trade-up for you to do actually is. You can do a number of things like turning on stat track only and turning on different levels of skins like purple to pink or pink to red and you can use this tool really really easily to find out what the best skins actually are. It's a little bit outdated sometimes but overall it's a really really good sign. So now for a way to actually figure out what items you want and how to get them at the lowest prices possible, uh, we have another site that I've talked about before in a previous video. This site is Bitskins. So you can actually use Bitskins to find really, really low priced items, the lowest they can possibly be across all marketplaces, and you can find them in all different variants using a bunch of filters. Uh, one reason that really proves why Bitskins is good is the MP7 Nemesis. This trades up to the uh, Piper Beast or the AK-47 Aquamarine Revenge. Uh, if you use Bitskins to trade up and you get the desired output, you can make about $20. But if you use the uh, Steam Marketplace and use the same output, you'll only get about a $10 profit. So it's a really, really good marketplace. I highly recommend using it. So now for the last tip and the last topic of the guide. Basically, this is how to sell your traded up items. So once you find out what trade up you want, once you get all the skins that you need for them, once you get the correct float values and all that, you're going to finally do the trade up. So let's say you're doing the Aquamarine Revenge and the Op Hyper Beast trade up. You're going to want the Op Hyper Beast. It's better than the AK-47 Aquamarine Revenge when you're talking about profit. So now you have a Hyper Beast and now you have it in whatever way you went for. If it's profitable, then what you want to do is sell it for the lowest market price. So let's say, for example, it's going for $41 on the Steam market. What you want to do is sell it for $40 
even and like 70 something cents. If you do this, you're going to have the lowest price in the market and you're going to have a higher price in the buy orders. So a person who just wants an off Hyper Beast is going to come see your skin as the first and lowest price and is going to buy it right off the bat. So that's the way you can make the most profit out of selling your traded up skins. And that's the last tip. So guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for the recent support on all my videos. I'm getting a lot of watch time, which is really, really good. I'm getting a lot of interaction in the comments. I'm super glad that you guys are doing that. It makes me so happy to see people interacting with my videos and I try to respond to all comments as quick as I possibly can. Uh, thank you guys for so much for all the likes and the views on my recent videos. Uh, it's super, super awesome to see that I have already such a great community, even though I'm still a really small channel. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, like the video if you enjoyed it, leave me a comment below if you want to see your own video idea, possibly in a future video, I'll respond to you, ask you some questions, see if your video idea is really sound and good, and then I might make a video on it in the future, who knows. So there's no harm in trying, go put your video idea in the comments and we'll see what I can do. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, again, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I will catch you guys next time. I'm signing out. Nalo is signing off.